Now along with the new EML system, fly-by-wire, came a new phenomena, yet limp home mode. Yet ever since that point, people have been saying about their broken cars, yes, it's in limp home mode. No, it's not. It's broken, not limp home mode. Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Well, I'm standing in front of my lovely 650i, and over there's my 840 Ci. They've both got V8 engines of more or less the same capacity. There's a big difference. 840 Ci's got a mechanical throttle system. You press the throttle pedal, it pulls a Bowden cable, it opens the throttle, you go a lot faster. Whereas on the 650i, it's all electronic. And of course, the 850 Ci and I on the E31 and the 750i E32, they had fly-by-wire systems before this car was manufactured. But I much prefer a mechanically operated throttle butterfly for that immediate power, but there's much more to it than meets the eye. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drive both cars in anger, and I'm gonna try and explain what the benefits of having a mechanically operated throttle are, against the downsides of having a fly-by wire system, but also we'll look at the reason why the 840 sh should have got a fly-by wire system, because I mean the E38, a few years later with the M62 TUB engine, that was fly-by wire, and it was an excellent system. So yeah, we'll have a look in the engine bay and I'll try and explain why it would have been much better to have a fly-by-wire system on the 840Ci. But let's get out on the road first. Now, one of the big differences between cable-operated throttle systems and electronic fly-by-wire systems is you lose the relationship between the throttle pedal and the throttle butterfly, or the power output in this case. Now on my 840Ci, if I press the pedal about halfway down, the throttle butterfly will open about halfway, and that doesn't change no matter what button you press or steptronic mode or anything, that remains the same. Well, it's not the case on the 650i. The relationship is always changing and it depends on a couple of things. But the most important thing to know is that between the throttle pedal and the throttle butterfly is something called a software engineer. Yeah, and that's never something you'd like in between your throttle pedal and your throttle butterfly. Yeah, these hairy things with very thin legs cause a lot of problems. And for instance, here's a corner I know really well I'm not in sport mode, thank goodness, and I know if I go around this corner at a certain speed, I can put the throttle down probably about 20% and safely get round the corner like this, not losing traction at all. The man-machine interface isn't fiddled with, but if I press the sports button, then that relationship changes. And instead of the amount of power I got out on that corner, which I was e easily able to control, Putting the sports mode on changes the relationship between the throttle pedal and the power output of the engine. So for instance, on that corner, I was putting a, a certain amount of power down. Well, if I put the throttle pedal to the same position on that corner, I get a lot more power. We're not releasing horsepower from the engine, by the way. This is all down to your hairy software engineer, I'm afraid. We don't release more power. All we're doing is changing the relationship between the throttle pedal and the power output of the engine. Now, I can do that perfectly happily on my own, thank you. I don't need a hairy fat lump in front of the computer screen telling me where my throttle butterfly should be. So in sports mode, put it into sports mode, now the, the relationship between the throttle pedal and the power output has changed. So now if I put the power on, I'm just going to start bunny hopping around the corner because it's like an on-off switch instead of a nice smooth power delivery. It's just not so controllable. 
So yeah, the sports button just makes you look a pillock. I've done a whole video on this, by, by the way. Yep, having a software engineer between your pedal and the power output of the engine, not a good thing to have at all, I'm afraid. Now, along with the new EML system, fly-by-wire, came a new phenomena. Yet, limp home mode. Yet, ever since that point, people have been saying about their broken cars, yes, it's in limp home mode. No, it's not. It's broken, not limp home mode. Limp home mode is reserved specifically for EML problems. And when you have them, it will say, engine failsafe prog and that EML light to come on on the dash. That's limp home mode. Anything else and your car engine's broken. You're not limping home. My first car was a 1966 HA Viva with its powerful 950cc four pot engine. Yeah that was forever going on to three cylinders. The old HT leads used to break down all the time, never quite sure why. And of course I could limp home if I wanted on three cylinders, but that wasn't limp home mode, it was just broken. And the same's true for modern BMWs. Unless it says engine failsafe frog, it's not limp home mode, your car's broken. Just get used to it. Well here's the throttle here, yeah, that's the throttle butterfly we're looking up there. There's the springs for it. And the actuator's here. So that just moves back and forwards as you press the throttle pedal. So that directly couples with the throttle body. There we go, you can see it moving there. Quite a clever linkage as well. So you can see this moves quite a lot. This doesn't move much at all until it gets past a certain point and then it starts moving a lot faster. That's yeah, quite clever, that linkage. Anyway, that cable goes to the throttle pedal. This one goes all the way around the back of the engine, back here again, out of there, along there, and into this device, and this is the cruise control actuator. So it's got a DC motor, and pull on the cable and open the throttle. But, of course, if you ran out of electricity, you had a disconnection here on the connector to it, it might leave the throttle open. So it's quite clever, it's got a clutch in it as well. So the clutch needs power, motor runs, opens the throttle body. If you don't get any electricity or there's a fault, then the clutch opens and the throttle butterfly with its two big springs pulls it straight back closed again. So that's two things controlling the throttle on these cars. Let's move on to the third one. And this one's got its own throttle body with its own butterfly in here. That's a sensor for it. The sensor for the main throttle body is down there and it's got a return spring at the bottom and it's driven by a cable, a very thin cable in this case, and that goes along there, behind there and to the actuator here. So the ASC plus T works on this one. Um, when it demands less engine power, that will quickly whiz close, well, adjust the throttle position of the secondary throttle butterfly. You can do that extremely quickly. Okay, there goes three things operating your throttle, the power from the engine. Number four is where this goes to. So we're taking air from the air filter, and that's before the secondary butterfly, before the main butterfly, and that's for the idle speed. So behind here, we've got an actuator called the idle speed control actuator. But yeah, it's an electrically operated device under control by the DME or the main computer ECU. Uh, so there we go, four things controlling your throttle. Yeah, we can add a fifth one to that, which of course is the gearbox. Uh, so the gearbox computer, which is in there and is controlling the gear changes, that electronically tells the DME, which is in the same box, to reduce power uh, so that no damage occurs when you're actually changing gear. Yeah, sounds quite complicated. What it actually does is retard the timing, retard the ignition timing, and that's how it changes gear quite so smoothly. Radio, so that's what goes on, and now you can start to understand why fly-by-wire seems a bit, <laughs> much better proposition.
Yeah, what I love about cable operated throttle systems is you know exactly how much power to put on on these sharp corners without losing traction. And that really is the greatest benefit. With a fly-by-wire system, you're never quite sure how much power it's gonna put on, but with a cable operated system, at least you know exactly what you're gonna get. So that aspect of driving, which of course is very important to me, is about it for the benefits, I'm afraid. Everything else is pretty much a downside, especially the cruise control, which does this. So when I press the stalk forward, a number of things has got to happen. First of all, the clutch has got to engage, and then the DC motor's got to spin out all of that slack in the cable, and then it's got to grab hold of the throttle butterfly and then adjust it to where it thinks it should be. So that's the reason you get this into cruise, slow down, speed up again, slow down again, and then eventually get the speed just about right. Yep, yeah, that's not pretty, is it? <laughs> it's pretty hopeless on there. It was the same on the E32 as well. It had exactly the same system. And the early E38s had the same system. It wasn't until the M62 TUB came out that you got a decent cruise control. And the cruise control on that car, on the 740, was fantastic. You now, everything else, I'm afraid, is pretty much a downside. You end up with all this sort of junk under the bonnet, which you don't really need if you had fly-by-wire. So how did the EML system in the E38 740 become so reliable in respect to the M70 system with its early Bosch 1.2 and 1.7 EML systems? Well, really it was down to the throttle body itself, the DK motors. So it was a DC motor, a little gearbox with grease in it, before it reached the throttle butterfly and as I say put power in for a certain amount of time you're not sure where the throttle butterfly is going to end up so then you need the potentiometer to work as a servo and you couldn't move the throttle body that quickly because of course the potentiometer is looking for a voltage and you could easily whiz past the target voltage so it had to do it at a rather leisurely pace now to make it much more reliable and much more controllable on the later systems instead of a dc motor and a gearbox they moved on to a stepper motor and a stepper motor works more in a digital sort of fashion you can give it a certain amount of pulses and it will move to a known position and it was connected directly to the throttle butterfly rather than going through a gearbox. And all the potentiometer was there for was fail safe and to set up the throttle butterfly in the first place. So now what they can do is quickly whiz the throttle butterfly into any position they like without having to wait for the potentiometer. If it whizzed to a position where it wasn't expecting, potentiometer picks up the problem and uh, yeah the engine will go into fail safe engine fail safe prog but that so rarely happens on the m62 on the 740i and of course the m73 on the 750 of course the m73 was also fitted to the e31 and uh, yeah in the 850ci later ones from 1995 so those systems were so much more dependable in reference to the early ones used on the M70. So it isn't as clear cut as first thought. Even with a mechanical throttle body control, we saw the complications of it because there's four other things wanting to control the engine power. But saying that, they very rarely intervene. And as a general rule, you're fully in control of engine power in all circumstances, apart from ones which might cause danger. Whereas, of course, with the 650i, now that relationship has changed. And the problem is we've got a software engineer stuck between the throttle pedal and the engine power output. 
yeah, it's he's deciding how much power to put out, independent of where you've got to throttle pre pedal press. And come up with this stupid idea that if you're in sports mode, then the throttle body ought to be open further for the same amount of pedal push, which just completely defeats the skill of driving in difficult conditions. And that's obviously not true for the 840Ci where you've got full control over it. But of course, uh, with the early fly-by-wire systems brought out in 1988 on the 850 and the 750, they've got a bad reputation, but that's only because the cars are getting ancient now. And they can be refurbished, the two DK motors. And a guy called Dragon on BIMforums.com, he'll do it for you for a few quid and he does it very well. And if you really want, I'll put up a link to a procedure where you can do all the work yourself. So yeah, the systems can be very reliable. And of course on the 750 and the 850, there's a lot less intervention between the pedal and the throttle butterflies. The software engineer didn't quite get his toe in the door, I'm very glad to say. Yeah, and that all started with the, seven, uh, the yeah, 740i with a TUB engine which decided to lose the relationship between pedal and throttle body. So if you pressed it slowly one inch, the throttle body would open a few millimetre. And if you pressed it quickly the same inch, it would open it fully. Your head would get snapped off. Your passengers would start whinging at you. Nah, it was the start of the downfall of a fly-by-wire system, I'm afraid. But there you go. Yeah, six of one, half a dozen of the other at the end of the day. Well, thanks for all the comments. Put a thumb up if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you next time.